depressed since I was nine years old. I started drinking when I was 13 years old. And I was doing drugs. I dropped out of school. And I started hearing voices when I was 18 years old. I tried to commit suicide. I didn't know I had bipolar disease. I feel like I lost my self-esteem. I feel like I lost my manhood. Because I thought all men should work. If you talk to a person that's really, really mentally ill, one of the first things that they will probably tell you is that they wish they could go to work. I was trained 20-something years ago, and my training basically taught me that people with mental illness would never work. Our client's biggest desire is to lead a normal lifestyle. A lot of them will tell you that I'd like to be like I was before I was sick. I would like to get a job, become more independent. If I thought that I would now be looking at people that were this ill, that were actually in the workforce, I know that I would have believed it. We were actually approached to participate in a new venture, and that venture was really the marrying of the Vocational Rehabilitation Agency in the state with the Mental Health Agency. The, the collaboration between Vocational Rehabilitation and Mental Health historically has not been the strongest it could be. Our mission is to assist people to recovery. Our mission is to enable eligible South Carolinians with disabilities to prepare, achieve, and maintain competitive employment. Recovery in mental health means putting people into the workforce. It means assisting them in maintaining jobs. And you look at another state agency over here, that is their total mandate is to find people jobs. That's your common denominator. There's a strong belief in mental health now that work is extremely important in the recovery of the person to be able to live an independent, fulfilling life. And that blends in so beautifully with what we've been trying to do. The supportive employment model out of Dartmouth kind of put all that together for us. You actually get with a client, you actually talk to them, you look at all kinds of things that have been important to them in life and talk about what is it that you think you'd like to do. What Dartmouth has really brought to the table is they have some evidence, they have done some research. Johnson & Johnson took that information and provided us with some funding and some technical support as well to be able to carry these concepts out in a framework within which to work. Through interviewing Scott and doing our employment assessments on Scott, the job that would best suit him and his preferences would be one that works outside in a garden type setting. We have a local open air market called the Rustic Market, and without knowing anyone, I stopped by and went in and talked with Carolyn Sigmund, the owner. I wanted to go back to work because it takes my mind off my negative things. Like, I don't have to worry about thinking about my hearing voices and stuff like that. At first we thought, well, no, I don't think that we will go with this. And then talking a little bit more, we thought, well, why not give it a try? Because everybody needs a chance. People may view them as different, as having mental illnesses. But after a couple of days or a week or two of working, uh, I don't think anyone notices it anymore. They just take them for the individual that they are. If I have a problem with Scott and I don't know how to deal with it, I can turn to our psychiatrist, I can turn to our counselor for advice. I like the feeling of having support behind me. So far, it's working pretty well. <laughs> I feel happy. It makes me feel like I don't have to depend on somebody no more. No matter what we do with medicine, sometimes the most powerful thing is getting a person back into what they consider an environment that everybody else operates in, a normal environment. And I think we've all determined now that when the person says they're ready, that's when we want to get them out there and find a job. I didn't know a lot of people with mental illness can get a job. Because a lot of people, I thought they wouldn't hire you. But look at me now, I got a job now. First time I ever got depressed, I didn't really realize it as depression. I was only sleeping about three or four hours a night, actually waking up, gagging after losing the job. I lost my house to tax sale. My self-worth is just nothing. I had a dream about committing suicide. I couldn't take it anymore. I realized I had a real problem. We have a family history of bipolar. Um, and so he and I and our sister dealt with it growing up. After I got out of the hospital, I got admitted into what's called Green Mountain Workforce, which helps put people with a mental illness back into the workforce. I didn't know what to do myself and didn't, didn't know what to do at all as far as working again. We're looking to see if they can find competitive work not something that we create for them. Many of my patients' goal is working, 
and it is very beneficial for my patients when they're ready to be getting up to go to work. And the therapeutic part is that they meet and attain their goals. We want our patients to succeed. So we aren't pushing people in the community who we think are gonna harm themselves or someone else. That's the last thing that we want. The risks are there, but the rewards and benefits are there. People that thought they would never ever work are going to work, are loving it, are, are making money, are making friends, are coming out of their shells. The programs helped me at a time when I needed it the most, and I really don't feel I could have done it without having the support. Support and employment is good for patients. Hopefully just enough support, not too much, not too little, and it's really up to us to provide the support to help them to do it. I think a lot of it comes from the, the leadership of both voc vocational rehabilitation and the Department of Mental Health. Not what's good for voc rehab, not what's good for mental health, but what's good for this particular population that we're working with. When you have a job and you're part of a team, that that kind of acceptance, that kind of joinedness with other people is a huge step in the recovery process. The support he got really helped him realize he has a lot of strengths and it's okay to ask for help, and it's okay to work with the illness. Matt can handle pretty much any job we give him. We usually just keep an eye and make sure everything's going the way that we want it to, but Matt's a very good worker. He has a very good knowledge base, and he does a great job. Working is a lot more than just getting the money. It's a sense of self-worth. It's a getting into the community. It's a proving things to yourself and to others that you can do these things. Dignity. People gain dignity through feeling like they contribute and that they're pulling their weight. We are at our best when we work with people who are hopeless and we stick with it. This is all about respecting people and, and helping people get where they want to be in life. Uh, and if you approach it from that, then I can't imagine an argument for not doing it. I'm proud of myself in that way that I've gained knowledge and respect for myself to say, yeah, I can work with this illness. I had this illness that caused me to be in the hospital. I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. My mother, she wasn't there for me. Many people called me retarded. A dog was too fast, afraid that they will hurt me. I was raped. It was a difficult time for me. I met Yvonne about three years ago. She was referred to me by her counselor here at the Capital Region Mental Health Center. And um, she went to work. Here, I knew in my mind I could get a job. Nothing could stop me from getting a job. Most consumers are saying, I want to feel like I have a life, that I have interests, and that that's respected and understood. And I think in the mental health system, that has not been the case for many, many years. It's starting to change. Supported employment here at Capital Region is based on the Dartmouth Johnson & Johnson model, which is the individual placement and support model. It's a collaboration between our agency, Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, and the Bureau of Rehabilitation Services here in Connecticut. The key component of it is clinical integration, which means that the vocational staff actually are part of the clinical team. You need to talk together, because what sounds so simple as the word, well, we're all committed to employment, when it comes down to the practicalities of what we mean in employment, all of a sudden it becomes clear that we mean fundamentally different things sometimes. It's always a little bit rough in the beginning because clinical staff don't understand why this vocational person is in the room and sitting at the table with us. But once there's a success, once a client gets a job and they start to see the transformation that their client is actually happier, they end up getting sold on this model too. You can tell the difference between before she felt like I'm a client, I'm a patient. That's what she, the way she identified herself. Right now she identified herself like any other young person that goes out to work in the morning. Now that I have a job, I feel like 
I'm on top of the world. Just been working in TJ Maxx and just doing a pretty good job. Yvonne is a very dependable person. She's one of the people that we always know that she's gonna be here and she's gonna be on time, which is great. She's very friendly, has a very positive attitude. She kind of blends into our family. What I like to do with my paycheck is saving up or go to a movie, go to stores. She still loves to buy things for her kitchen. I like to work. I like to bake and I like to eat. <laughs> Your challenge is how do I help this person be successful both individually and socially in the environment that we share together? Other programs, they support for a small period of time. The difference with IPS is that we're always there. So you're really partnering with the employer. You're really saying, I'm your friend in this. I'm here to support you just as much as support Yvonne. I'm going to help you out, too. You want to take the chance. Definitely take the chance. You don't know what kind of person you're going to get until you try. If we can see more projects like Johnson & Johnson bringing this to the front, it's going to really change the way things are done. You see those people that they are working. And that's the biggest satisfaction you can have. I know deep down inside, I was gonna make it. I will do something with my dreams.